Anyone who has ever lived should be familiar with the concept of blur. From tweaking photo settings, to enabling motion blur in a video game, to learning about edge detection algorithms from Ace Rolla, or even waking up without your glasses on. The blur effect is everywhere, and in this video we'll go over the algorithm behind it and implement a common variation of it called Gaussian blur. Let's first create a grid overlay by setting up the UV coordinates from negative 1 to 1, multiplying them by 10, taking the fractional value of the result, centering each cell in the grid by remapping the UV coordinates from negative 1 to 1 once again, taking the absolute value of that result, calculating the distance from the center to the edge of each cell, and performing a smooth step function to draw lines in a grid-like pattern. Now we don't actually need this grid to run the algorithm, but it can help us visualize what's happening under the hood. For the purpose of this demonstration, let's say that each cell in this grid represents an individual pixel. First and foremost, we need to find an image that we want to blur. For each pixel in this image, we find its 8 neighboring pixels. We sum the color values in these 9 total pixels and divide the result by 9 to compute the box blur effect. We can also change the size of the kernel, which is a fancy word for the square used in the blur calculation. Decreasing the size of the kernel to 1 will keep the resulting texture unchanged, while increasing it will make it more and more blurry. And that's how the box blur effect works in a nutshell. We can write this algorithm iteratively in a programming language like JavaScript or Rust or Python. This approach requires that we perform the blur action on the image pixel by pixel in a nested for loop. We can also write the algorithm in a shader and run it in parallel for each pixel, directly on the GPU. The second approach is much faster, and it's the one we'll go over in this video. But before we jump into the code, there's one last thing to talk about, and that is the Gaussian blur. After all, that's what this video is all about. The main difference between the box blur and the Gaussian blur is the weights used in the kernel. The box blur uses an even distribution of weights, while the Gaussian blur uses a Gaussian distribution of weights. On the left we've got box blur, and on the right it's the default texture. Now I've replaced the left side with the Gaussian blur. To be honest, it's pretty difficult to tell the difference, but what you need to know is that the Gaussian blur tends to produce slightly better results. And that's all there is to it. Now that we have an understanding of the Gaussian blur algorithm, let's see how we can implement it in a GLSL shader. As with all the shader tutorials, we're just going to be changing the color variable here. I've set it to the UV coordinates for now, and you can see the result here. First thing that we're going to want to do is to actually allow the GLSL canvas to read an image that we have in our local folder. Under my shader tutorials Gaussian blur folder, I've created a mario.png file. So we want to tell the GLSL canvas extension that this exists, and this is how we do that. And once you do that, uh, it binds that texture to this variable over here. So what we can do is check that this is actually working by reading the texture based on the UV coordinates, and that'll give you a VEC4, and then we can set the color to be the RGB of that VEC4 texture. So if I save that, then we'll see our Mario picture. The next thing we're going to want to do is create a text cell size. A text cell essentially represents how far move the texture forward when we're checking to the right or the left or you know the, all the other directions. So here I'm defining the image resolution. Um, this is one tenth of the actual image size. So the image is about 2800 by 2700 pixels, but I'm dividing that by 10 because it actually allows us to visualize the blur more easily. And here I'm setting the kernel size to one. We're gonna essentially iterate in a, in a nested for loop from negative one to one. So that means that the box blur is gonna need to be divided by nine. And that is how I'm calculating this value here. I am multiplying the current kernel size by two. So one times two is two, adding one to get three, and then squaring that to get nine. And that is the formula that you can use if you want to easily vary the kernel sizes. Once you have that, um, inside the nested for loop that goes from negative 1 to 1 on x and negative 1 to 1 on y, uh, we're going to sample the texture. And here you're going to see that we're sampling at the current UV plus a little bit of offset. And that offset is based on the texel size that we defined over here. Once we sample that uh, texture, we get the RGB values and add it to the cumulative box blur color, which is initially set to zero. So we're going to add it. Essentially, this loop is going to run a total of nine times. It's going to check all the eight 
uh, cells around the current cell. And then at the end, we're going to divide the box blur color by the box blur divisor, which in this case would be nine. If I were to set the color equal to the box blur color and save, you'll see that the picture gets blurry. Maybe that is not exactly obvious, so I'm going to increase the kernel size to three. And if I save now, then you should clearly see that the picture is pretty blurry. Now that we've got the box blur and have an idea of how to sort of work with textures and texture offsets, we can take a look at the Gaussian blur. Now for the Gaussian blur, what we're going to want to do is to manually set these values. And to be honest, I think it's pretty easy to read and understand what's happening. So I'm going to move the kernel size here back to one. And essentially the Gaussian blur is doing the same thing as the box blur, except here the weights are a little bit different. So what we did here is we added all of them together and divided them by nine. However, this time around, uh, we are going to weight each um, item differently, where the center values, so uh, at 0, 0, we're adding the highest weight. And as we sort of disperse outwards, um, up or left or down, we are kind of like reducing that weight. Then at the end, I am going to divide the total Gaussian blur color uh, by the Gaussian divisor, which is going to be 16. And that is essentially the sum of all of these numbers over here. So if I were to uncomment this and save it, then you'll see a little bit of a tint change here. So it's kind of subtle, but if you sort of like play around with it on your machine, you'll notice that when I save the Gaussian blur, it looks a little bit more clear, even though it is a blur effect. So the blur, the result of the blur looks more clear with Gaussian than it is with box blur. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, now you have a better understanding of the Gaussian blur algorithm and how to implement it in a GLSL shader. If you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.